Uh, I'm, get, I'm getting like a signal. Are you ready for me? Oh my God, okay, everybody, welcome to, oh look, I you guys are so good. Welcome to the TED Show live at the Citrus Club. Yes, I like that, Diana, thank you. Um, this is our second episode, if that's what we're calling it, and there are so many people we need to thank, but we'll do that later, because uh, right now it's all about me. No, it's not. Uh, right now, it's all about David Swanson, who's my first guest. But I got to give you guys a round of applause because you're here. You're here and you're watching. And we're, we're live on Facebook. I've got a microphone, which I think I was born to have, don't you? I mean, come on. Um, see, we got good people. All right, so we had such a great time last time. I won't mention any names, but we might have talked about a lot of things that we shouldn't have talked about. Uh, so I'm counting on my first guest to do the exact same thing. So uh, let us know you can hear, wait, oh, let us know you can hear us and see us. You can see us, right? This is my normal thing. Can you hear me is my thing, right? Everybody can hear me? All right, so um, my first guest who has family in town, so we want to get him in here and we want to talk to him, is a friend of mine, David Swanson. David is the head pastor. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Head pastor at First Presbyterian, which is my church. No judgment. Listen, I go. I'm there. Twice a year. Twice, <laughs> twice a year. Allegedly. It's not, it's not true. Um, I watched Easter service online. That was good. Listen, I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, so David is kind enough to come on the show, and then I said, let's do a show about death and dying. Who wants to talk about I'm death in. and dying right now? You do not want to talk about death and dying. Not my death, love. My wife is over there like, I'm ready, like you're gone. Uh, we're going to talk about different things today. We're not going to talk about death and dying, but so welcome, my friend. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. It's a lively bunch tonight, a little different than our show. Normally. Listen, it's lively, right? They don't, they're not quiet because they have a bar. Uh, you, know, you don't necessarily we don't have, have a, one of those at First Press, so it's a little, a little odd. But. Or at the TED Show Live during the day, unless you're lucky enough to get here at the right time. That's right. Uh, but David is, he's just, I don't know, you just, you give so much to the community. So let's talk about you a little bit. And you've got your beautiful family here, which we want to give them a shout out. Yes. Because we gotta get they're them. here and they're listening to this going, Dad. You are dumbing it down for the TED Show Live. I'm very embarrassed that I'm sitting here, but that's okay. So my, my oldest child, John David, and my... Hey, hi to John David. Yes, my youngest is Kaylee, and uh, she's a nurse at Vanderbilt Hospital. So uh, if nice. anybody, like, falls down or has a medical problem, you're, we're good. We're covered. You won't find anyone old enough for that here. Wow. <laughs> Stand in line. And my wife, Lee, who uh, is the vice president for... Community Relations at Reform Seminary Novito. So she's here tonight, too. Wow, you've got professional people behind you. Johnny, i got three kids. My middle's not here. Alex couldn't be here tonight. But I have uh, two degrees from Florida and one from Auburn. So there you go. So let's talk a little bit about you're a member of the Citrus Club, right? Member of the Citrus Club for so 14 how did, years. How does that work when you're the head pastor of First Presbyterian? Like, do you get a hard time about that? When people are up here, do they want to confess to you? Like, what happens uh, when you, I mean, occasionally I've seen you in the corner. I'm like, I, I have stuff to talk to David about. <laughs> No, this is the Citrus Club is a great place. It's a block from the church, and I've always loved the club because it's a place where you can come. You can have a nice lunch. It's quiet. You can talk about whatever uh, someone may need to talk about, and that's great. Where I do run into trouble is in the fitness center downstairs. You're trying to have a good workout, and someone comes and asks you, you know, what happens when you die? And I'm like, can we, can we talk about that later? A after just one more set, and then we're, then we're good. Okay, first so. of all, the fitness center is an urban legend. I've never been down there. <laughs> yeah. um, it's clearly, in the basement so. where most things need to be. 
Uh, there's no bar down there, so I can't no. possibly venture. You would never go down, down there. I would never go down there. Uh, but I would, I would imagine, like, I see you up here at lunch, and you've got all these people that you're with, and I, there's community leaders, because you're such a passionate community leader in Orlando. And then you have all these people, and I would imagine people want to talk to you. They want to engage you. Uh, how, do you how do you separate that? Do you encourage them to find another church? Do you <laughs> encourage them to... Uh, to go somewhere else, or do you go, come to my office later? Well, a lot of it is just about serving the community. So um, the, the primary thing that I do outside of church, I'm the vice chair of the Central Florida Commission on Homelessness. So right now we're working very hard to house all the people that you see on the street downtown as you walk into the BBT building. It's amazing. Uh, we're working yes, with let's those Let's give people. a round of applause for that. That's awesome. So I'll become, I'll become the Joel Hunter is the chair now. I become the chair in, uh, in August, and we'll continue to work on that very hard. So that's almost like a second job. And then I am on the Board of Governors for the Citrus Club as well. So uh, I, I really love engaging members, uh, talking about what's happening in our community. Uh, our, our church is a city center church, and uh, one of our, our clear missions is to serve the city uh, wherever there's a need. And so we're trying to be as engaged as we can be. So two things. I, I rolled off the Board of Governors a few years ago, and they won't let me back on. So if you have any pull there, that would be awesome. I'll work on that. Secondly, how was it with Joel Hunter? So is there any competition? Like, so he's, <laughs> you're the chair, like you're coming, you're the incoming chair. Was, the there a, was, chair. There a, was there a whole no, discussion no, no. about that? There's no, there's no competition among pastors. Are you kidding? Never. Uh, Allegedly. Never Allegedly. Allegedly. No, Joel, I've known for a long time. He was one of the first people to call me and take me to lunch when we got to Orlando, and uh, he's just a, a great human being, and he retired from Northland about six months ago, so he's been able to throw a lot of time into his community service work as well. So how do you balance everything that you're doing with family, because family is so important, right? right. And they're looking at me as I'm asking this question. You're not allowed to look, right? <laughs> so I'm getting the eyes. Right. So how do you balance? Because a lot of people in here, we all, we all face the same thing. We don't know how to balance work, play, faith, whatever we're doing, whatever we're into, how do you balance that out? Well, if you don't figure that out uh, quick, then you're going to have to learn it the hard way, and you're going to wind up burning out, or you're going to make decisions uh, that are going to negatively impact your life. And so uh, I, I kind of got up on the edge of burnout myself, and I think you have to learn to balance uh, your family and your career and your fitness and all those things that go into it, your expression of your faith, whatever that may be. And uh, so my family has always been priority. And uh, so I, I, I try not to do uh, more than three nights out a week at various meetings or whatever. And uh, at least four nights I'm home and I'm investing time with them. And now that we're empty nesters, uh, it's a little easier because we're not chasing children everywhere. But in those days, it was a lot harder. It, it's very difficult to find the balance, I think. And all of us here, we, we talk about it a lot at the club. We love the club. It's a great place to be. But then you have family to go to. You're trying to figure out how to work your work into it, your faith, your church. But so tell me about from a community leader perspective, because that adds a whole nother dimension to it. So you have a lot of people here who want to get involved in the community. So you're already struggling uh, with all of that. How do you balance that in? How do you make time for getting involved? Because I'm also incredibly involved with um, the Central Florida Commission on Homelessness. Mm. And I love Shelley Lawton and all the work that Shelley, there's great work fabulous. that they're doing. Uh, but how do you balance that out? Because people go, I don't even have time to breathe, Ted. Well, I, I think there's, there are uh, things that are renewing about serving your community because it provides a deeper sense of purpose to your life. I think a lot of times we're spending a huge number of hours to make money, uh, to make ourselves uh, have the things that we think are going to bring us happiness. And in the end, all they do is bring us more things that we have to take care of. And do they necessarily make us happy? No, I don't know that they do. Uh, but what does is when we actually invest our lives in things that are changing the lives of others and making their lives better. So what are we doing to lift our community, to lift our culture, uh, to see places where there is injustice? And how do we bring uh, justice to those places, that gives your life a tremendous sense of purpose and energy. And I don't think uh, those things wear you out. I think they energize you. And when you spend your time doing those things, uh, you're probably going to be a better family person anyway. I agree. All right. One last question for you. 
Uh, so when I came to you and said, let's talk about death and dying on a weekly basis, did you think I was insanely crazy, or did you already think that prior? I, I thought that before, but that just certified it for sure. Totally. But I tell you what, it's, it really has been amazing. Every Tuesday at 3.30, uh, we have a Facebook Live show called Navigating What's Next, and we just answer the questions that people have about kind of what happens at the end, what are people's regrets, is there a heaven, what about children, all those kind of questions. And, and we go for 30 minutes, and it's, it, we've always got more to talk about, and then we're flooded with questions, and it's, it's just a, it's a conversation. It's not at all saying, this is what you have to do, but let's just bring those issues to the fore. So we, we have, you know, 300, 400 views a week and tons of questions, and uh, so Tuesday at 3.30... If you're in your, you know, at work and you're bored, hey, uh, turn us on. <laughs> you don't have to be bored. You just have to want to watch. That's Come right. Come on. All right. So you've been a blessing. Thank you so much, Ted. Thanks for having me. This you is really great. are. Thanks Everybody, give much, him people. a round of applause. Thank Enjoy you it. so much. And thanks to your family for putting up with this tonight. All right. So I don't know how. Where are we cutting for a little bit? We're just going to keep going. All right. Whatever I want to do. That is a scary thought process. Who? Who? Who, who, yeah, Stacy just said, don't tell me that. Who thinks that's scary that you want to give me the reins? Um, Bob Scott's around here somewhere, but we have to, we have to wait for Mr. Scott before. Uh, oh, gosh. All right. Never mind. All right, everybody. Welcome Bob Scott to the, uh, and listen. To, <laughs> so Bob and I have been friends for a long time. He's a longtime member, probably longer than me. He's younger, but longer than me. But Bob said, hey, Ted, why don't we do a wine tasting? And I said, oh, my God, my liver loves you more than it loved you prior. Uh, so well, everybody welcome Bob Scott to the show. Ted, first let me say that the amenities in the green room are just amazing. <laughs> Aren't they the best? We have amenities. I have a whole rider. Nobody's read it yet, but I have a writer. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no green M and M's. I don't know what's happening. Uh, so Bob and Ma is Mary here tonight? No, Mary's not here tonight. Oh, did she say heck no? I'm not going to watch Ted Bogart up on stage. Um, but Bob Scott, it, you tell, well, tell them about you. Well, uh, gee, what can I say? I've been well, a don't member. Don't start with I was born. That's I was, all I ask. I was. Okay, good. Shortly after I was born, I became a member of the Citrus Club. Pull it up here, Bob. 1985. 1985, so that's before me. Yeah, that's pretty good, huh? That's good. That means I'm older <laughs> than you. <laughs> no, I... Uh, Keep it up here, Bob. Right I up have, here. I have a uh, company that designs and produces presentations for legal trials. That's what I do during the day. And, and have, you have an office here, which is why you and Mary, right. his beautiful wife, come up here a lot during club hours and have coffee, Absolutely. allegedly. Absolutely. Then at night, I have a uh, avocation. I have an international uh, radio show on wine and uh, wine-oriented travel. Did you notice Bob had to say an international show? I'm sorry, I'm not international yet, but uh, Bob has an international show and that's a wine show? That's a wine A show. radio show? It's a wine radio show. In fact, it's called winelineradio.com. Winelineradio.com. What's funny is I've never been invited on that show. I think Bob's afraid I'm going to drink all the wine, probably. That's been a consideration, I can tell you that. <laughs> all right, so what happens on your show? So you, have, you host it here at the Citrus Club. And then you, you, I mean, we're, we're going <laughs> to, I can't wait for him to tell you the name of this wine, but we're going to talk about wine tonight, but you go on the show and you talk about different wines from different regions. And this isn't your basic, awful, nothing against total wine, but your total wine tasting. You actually go out, like we've got something from Mississippi or Missouri or Iowa that we're going to taste right now, right? That's right. So talk we about how the, how that works and how your show goes. Okay. Uh. My show's really built around uh, interviews with prominent uh, winemakers around the world. And, you know, we have casual interviews, we drink a little wine, and we have a great time. And we talk about their passion for wine and the longevity in the business and that type of thing. 
recently, right here, Bob. We've been doing. Pull it up, right, right to your mouth. You have it. Yeah. You have this okay, going. Okay, right. Oh, okay. Oh, Is that better? oh we got Bob yeah. going. Now we can hear Bob. All right, here we go. Okay. Well, I didn't realize that this wouldn't carry. It's all right. See, okay. Now you can hear yourself. Yeah. Right. Uh, recently, we have been doing a little experimentation with what we call non-left coast wines. There's, uh, particularly in the United States, there is a great plethora of uh, wine producers throughout really all 50 states. And uh, so we did initially with uh, David Fuhrer, who's the uh, wine consultant for the Smithsonian, we did a series of tastings of wines from places like uh, Arizona, Nevada, uh, New York State, Long Places Island. you wouldn't normally think have good yeah, wine. Exactly. Like Florida. Idaho. Idaho. Idaho, believe me, has some incredible wine. So that went really well. And then as a result of that, Mary and I were invited to uh, go to the... Uh, Food and wine experience in St. Louis by the St. Louis by, by the Missouri. How do I get these gigs? Was that a paid gig or that like was what's a, happening? That was a paid. gig. Why am I not, Stacy? Why are you not booking these gigs for me? Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Or Scott or Yvonne. Who? Listen, I don't know what to do. You got invited to go to the St. Louis food and wine experience, right? Which was incredible. And while we're there, we were able to be introduced to a number of very fine uh, wines from Missouri. Now, Missouri... Did you actually hear him? There's, we're going to taste a wine from Missouri, or Missouri, as some people say. So we're actually going to taste... How is that right. even possible there's wine in Missouri? Let me tell you, they've got a beautiful river system. They've got mountains, the Ozark Mountains. And they've had... They're the oldest AVA, American Viniculture Area, in the United States. Yeah, but what happened is, and you're going to tell them in a minute, you're going to tell them the name of this wine, and we're all going to laugh because it sort of sounds like it's something from Missouri. <laughs> That's right. I hate to say it, but it's true. This wine oh, is... Please, uh, please listen to the name of the wine because it's worth every second, honestly. First, let me say the producer is Les Bourgeois, a winery in, uh, in Missouri, and this is a Chardonnay. Of course, it's Chardonnay. I mean, come on. Chardonnay grape is a hybrid grape, blended or hybridized. Hybridized. So, what is what does Chardonnay have in it? It has Saval, which is a French grape that you may not know about, and it has Chardonnay. And you put it together, you have Chardonnay. And, okay. <laughs> See, Levita is getting it. Levita Loco over here is getting it, and I, I appreciate you laughing. I, I really. I'm do. gonna I'm gonna lay this uh, mic down now for a moment. Lay, lay the mic down, Bob. I that is where I was going. Thank you for bringing that out of nowhere, Josh. Josh Pies, by the way, everybody, give him a round of applause for putting all of this together. Making me look pretty, which isn't hard, I don't think, but uh, making me look pretty. I labor over <laughs> you la He labors over it. Okay. Now for the Chardonnay. Tell me, what do you get on the nose, Ted? Be honest. I am not going to be honest right now. No, hold on. Let's... Um, it it seems mild. How's that? Are you? Yeah, I'm picking up uh, some, like peach, white peach. It, that's exactly what I was thinking. And uh, <laughs> and in the background, I get a little uh, lychee. <laughs> you know what? I thought lychee in the beginning. <laughs> I don't know how to spell lychee, Bob, but I think lychee is totally where we're going with this wine. All right, so there here we go. go. Okay. Do I get to taste it so now? now? That's really the important yeah, part. Yeah, taste it. Okay, 
That does not taste like a Chardonnay. I, no, I don't doesn't. like Chardonnay at all. I know you don't. Why? Well, that's why I brought that the, is the, a Chardonnay. <laughs> I, do, I actually deserve all of this. All right, so that Chardonnay is del delicious. It actually. is. Mild, but it does have... I, I wouldn't have known peach or leche. Uh, but I can tell you that the flavor is delicious. It is. And don't you get some of that leche? leche? I don't even know what to do with that. All right, so how did you decide to pick this, though? I mean, if, you, if there's... 50... I had it in my cooler, and it was already cold. <laughs> That's honesty right there. Thank you. There you, you go. <laughs> no, I thought it would be interesting to uh, taste a wine from a region that most people don't think of when they think of fine wine. It's actually delicious. It is. So how do you, do, can we buy this in Florida? And is this what you do on the radio show? Do you talk about different wines that are uh, unique? Yes. If you go to uh, winelineradio.com, WineLineRadio.com. You'll you'll find a special called "Show Me Some Wine." It's a series of twelve tastings, of which we've done four or five now, of wines from Missouri, and you can uh, get a good idea. You can link directly to the wineries websites, and you in most cases you can purchase. Directly from the winery. So, other th so this wine is actually delicious, people. I would not make that up. Uh, talk a little bit about your wine dinner that you have coming up on April 20th. Gee, I'm happy you mentioned that. <laughs> we did not rehearse this, so this is good. April the 20th, which is a Friday night, two weeks from now, I guess, um, we, uh, I was asked by Jeff Jump to uh, host a wine dinner... And we are doing that in conjunction with Airfield Wines from Washington State, from the Yakima Valley. Now, uh, Jeff is about to bring you some uh, <laughs> something to help you, Bob. <laughs> We're all about. Well, look at uh, that. This was supposed to have my picture on it. Wow. What is Airfield? I don't know. I signed up because I heard you were in charge. That's the truth. So tell us about Airfield because I don't well, know. Well, the first about thing, it. Airfield makes no Chardonnay. Thank God. Yeah. But they do make some incredible wines. We first ran into Airfield uh, Winery when Mary and I were in Seattle and we had been invited to a Riesling tasting at. Uh, Charles Smith, the famous Charles Smith Bob, winery. Bob's a name dropper, That's so right. just listen. Whatever vineyard it is or whatever name it is. So all right. Chuck, was having, <laughs> Chuck was having a Riesling tasting at his Jet City winery. So we went out, and it even had a burlesque show. It was an amazing night. Uh, the first Riesling we tasted was from Airfield, and there were 20 different wineries involved, and we went through and tasted all of them and said, gee, that first wine from Airfield was the best of the evening. It was amazing. So we went back and uh, spoke with uh, the assistant winemaker, Travis Maple, and uh, he said, why don't you come up to our tasting room in Woodenville tomorrow, and we'll do a private tasting. And we said... Bob's all about the private tasting. Yeah, sounds good to me. That. So we did. We tasted eight or nine of their wines, and they were fantastic. We had an uh, opportunity to taste here with Jeff, and uh, he just was knocked out with the wines. I must have missed my invitation you did. to that, perhaps. That's right. Yeah. I'm only here 24 hours a day, but... Well, there, there was a Chardonnay <laughs> involved, so we didn't think you'd uh, want to be there. Touche, baby. That's good. <laughs> oh, this is good. It is good. No, it's a Chardonnay. I, I cannot tell you how good that Chardonnay is. All right. So, Bob, anything you... Any parting words of wisdom you want to tell, talk to them about... We're going to give, when we post the video, which you may or may not know, we'll share, like, your contact for the radio show. I and appreciate what you that. do. So, But what about people who, like, there's a lot of wine being poured. I mean, we've got Art Bailey. He's got uh, Moonshine over there. 
Uh, we don't know what's happening in the rest of the tables, but what kind of, uh, any last parting words of wisdom for people who are interested in wine, but they're afraid? Wine can be scary. Wine can be intimidating, and it shouldn't be. Just uh, think of it as another glass of, you know, a common beverage made with a little more sophistication and a little more alcohol, and uh, enjoy it for what it is. Don't be... Uh, you know, don't get up tight with the uh, wine. Wine is for everybody to love. And, uh, you know, you don't have to have a sommelier's experience in order to enjoy it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. Everybody give Bob a round of applause. I love it. And so thank he'll you. be able to, he'll answer questions later about Chardonnay. Uh, and this wine, it's actually delicious. You know, I can't fake stuff. So it's really, really good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'm sure the Missouri Wine Board will be glad that you enjoyed it. I am very it. glad. Anytime I hear I'm going in front of a board, though, I'm a little scared. Uh, so I'm glad it's just the Missouri Wine Board. Cheers. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob's amazing. We're going to take two minutes. We love you guys. Thanks for the two minutes. Two, 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 two.